to the Tracy L. Clark Show with me, Tracy L., the founder of the Body Regeneration Method. And I am here to empower you and teach you how to connect to the God consciousness like you've never connected before. Tune in every Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific, right here on Transformation Talk Radio, where I combine science, spirituality, and ministry to help you unlock the secrets within so you can finally let go of what's holding you back. If you are truly ready to break free and bring in the new and stop wasting your time, join me and together let's unlock your superpowers so you can live your extraordinary life. Welcome. I am so happy to have you all here today, no matter where you're following us. Welcome to all of our Facebook friends, because we know you come live, and to the people on Transformation Talk Radio, and for everybody listening to this later on your favorite place to find your favorite podcast, I am so honored that you show up with us every week to learn something new. Now, I know last week a lot of people were still on the phone. We were talking about shifting around finances and energy, so you can join us next week if you'd like to call in, and we will pick that conversation up then, I promise you. I am so excited today because we have an incredible guest. We're not going to be taking a break, so I'm just going to forewarn you. I brought my favorite water cup. I think it was pro- appropriate for today. Wake, pray, slay, if everybody's watching it. Yes, yeah, so you'll get into that today <laughs> a little bit more. But, you know, about a year ago, Lucas, Mac, and I tried to connect. And it wasn't happening. He had stuff going on. I had stuff going on. And then, and then we always talk about divine timing, no accidents. And through both of our growth and our journey, we connected. And if you had the opportunity, I know many of you did, you heard me on his podcast. Now, I'm at the Golden Rule Revolution. And you got to check it out. you got to check it out if you missed that interview. And we could have talked for hours. I know we're not going to get through even half of what I want to discuss today. But if you've been struggling with religion, connection with the God of your understanding, that whole space of love, what's going on in the world right now. You are going to love today's episode. Lucas has not only been a coach, he's been on a TED Talks, he's motivation, he has his own podcast, he's got retreats, he's got everything going on. So it's a lot of fun. But not only that, guys, you're going to love his heart and why you're going to, I always say, when I look at Lucas, no matter what of all those things, we all have our bio. One of the things I loved about our conversation was basically, I'd say a seeker of truth, real truth and seeing the other side and bringing that truth forward. So Lucas, I'm so thrilled that you got up extra early this morning to be with us today. <laughs> I, I am. Uh, I'm so honored to be on. I'm so honored. Yeah. Not the five o'clock hour, the eight o'clock hours. It's way better. <laughs> Yeah. For anybody, Lucas thought we were going to start at 5 a.m. his time. I said, I wouldn't do that for you. That is just not kind. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm so thrilled that you, you came here today and getting to know you more and your journey. And one of the things that people are struggling with right now, huge, and you and I have had this great conversation, is really that... How do we leaving these old paradigms? And I always say leaving that old religious paradigms, opening up to love. Yeah. And as somebody that was you, that was your world, you know, as a preacher in that Christian community, and you did yeah. leave it to find God. I have some questions I want to ask for your perspective. Yeah, <laughs> and your well, take on it. Right away. We can... I don't the energetically, but you know, I think it's really important that people hear your perspective because it's so beautiful and you found your own journey. And one of the things that I shared with you recently that had happened with me is I always find it interesting how we talk about coming to love. There's no judgment, right? We're all on our journey. We're trying to find our space. But in that world, there's so much judgment. But if they can judge you, but if you question them, you're a demon or you're evil or you're... Where does this all come from? Yeah. 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 Where does this all stem from? Like, it's so hypocritical because i'm like they'll take your money all day long but then they'll call you a demon yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. and you know it only is to the people that vocalize it because if everyone mapped out if it was possible to map out to the infinite degree what we believe as human beings as individuals if i was able to map out every single belief structure that i had and you did the same and all seven billion people on this planet did the same no one has the exact same beliefs, like no one has the same fingerprint, nor the same retina. And the fallacy is just don't talk about it and we can get along. But when we start to talk about it, then 
what it does is create fear in, in the person listening. Like, wait, what do I not know? Wait, what do you know? Wait, this person told me that what you're saying is wrong. And that, that is the root of all the fruit that gets produced. That is the root is fear. fear. It, oh, it's, it's so true. I, I put a post today about ingredients. What ingredients are you put up on my Instagram? Are you mm. putting in your life? And how, if you got too much fear as your ingredient, you know, things are going to be, be crazy. Do you also, do you see from your perspective for going down this path and really coming to find God, which is that ultimate love, right? The love of understanding for who we both are and where we're going. Do you, do you, would your, would I be right in saying from your perception of what you've seen that perhaps a lot of that judgment still comes from, like you said, the fear that perhaps a lot of these teachings, if they step out of them, that they may find that they weren't all true or, and there's more to learn. So it would like almost break a paradigm that seems to be safe for people right now. That safe is an interesting word. It's almost numb. People are so numb and they're not happy. No. In the United States alone, I don't know what the stats are in Canada, but suicide before 2020 just before 2020 and the numbers they haven't even been able to collect them all but yeah. suicide was higher than it's ever been in the united states in, it is here too 20, and yeah. it's and it's rising really 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 fast rapidly yeah. and no one's talking about and it happens there's in los angeles there was a christian pastor who had a huge church huge following beautiful family wife and kids and he takes his own life yeah. I tried to take my life at the age of 20. And when you're saying um, safe, there. it's yeah. really, I think, they're trapped. And everyone wants to break out. But sadly, the, the only way out is out when you don't yeah. understand the only way out is through and go and explore. And A.W. Tozer, who has written... You know, 50 Christian classics, the, uh, man's pursuit of God, God's pursuit of man. He said, a man with an experience is never at the mercy of a man with an argument. And what does that mean? That means you don't know unless you go into that place and try it. Now, I grew up hearing, well, don't go there. If God's not there, don't go there. But David wrote, where can I go from your presence that you are not there? If I go to the depths of hell, there you are. Wherever I go, God is. Mm-hmm. So this this first lie is, well, if you go there and God's not there, you're going to be consumed by <laughs> Satan and his Satan. demons. And, demons. You see yeah. those people, yeah. that demon and that demon. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. And it's sad. I really, I feel so much sadness for the Christian world. And, yeah. and I talked to some Christian leaders. I think we talked about this on, when you were on my podcast. I said, yeah. if Paul writes that the Gentiles were grafted into the vine to provoke the Jews to jealousy, and God is supreme, sovereign, above all things, yeah. do you not think that the New Age world is getting grafted into the vine to provoke the Gentiles to jealousy? And they, they struggled with it. And I said, your perspective is man's control of man. You have to look at God's supreme control of all people and love of all, all the breaths that he has breathed into the souls of man. And until we detach from this human control of other humans, which is a variant forms of slavery, be it physical, spiritual, emotional, psychological, it is control of mankind. When you step out and look from God's perspective, God, God is love and God is light. It says in the new Testament, three declarative statements that God is God in Hebrews. It says, our God is a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. In first John, it says, God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. And it says, God is love. Now, if you look at love, And you look at light. The only context of light when that is written is not electricity. It's not lumens. It's not, you know, you flip a switch and and it can go on and off. And what color temperature is that bulb? And and I don't know if I like the fluorescent. It is fire. And when Jesus says you are the light of the world, he's saying you are the fire. And whatever, wherever fire goes, it has to be connected to a source to continually fuel it. Even Solomon said, the fire that saith not, it is enough. A fire can never 
satiate itself. It always has to have fuel. So you and I as humans must be connected to the, to God, to the source of fire. But then if he is fire, a consuming fire, which is light and he emanates and he consumes and he draws and he brings warmth and he purifies and he heals and all these beautiful things. Then there's nothing that when we walk with that source that we can't explore, bring to him and let him consume that, which is not worthy to be left in our life. But most people have never given God the opportunity to be God because they're so stuck by man inserting themselves as God's narrative yes. in their life that they don't know God. And that is what I'm finding that to, and this is why to know the love of God, my dear brothers and sisters, you have to find the God of love. Amen. You know what? It, it's so true. This is what I was saying. You and I are so on the same page with it. Got goosebumps. Oh, thank you. God yeah, approved, right? God yeah, approved. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Spirit of prayer of God approved. Um, you know, it, it's so true. And that's one of the things I find. And this is a part of the new earth that I see unfolding is that we will be walking more in love and understanding that our journeys, our imprints, our blueprints that we're changing and moving, the higher we raise to our vibration of love, the more you see that there is divine perfection in all of us. In anything we've happened, what happened journeys, like, could you imagine, because, and I've seen this where it still happens here. So I'm going to use this example. There's um, in the Greek churches here. So people like that. If you don't still wear your skirt past your knee, whatever, you can't come in and Mm -hmm. find God. So all the rules you're talking about, right? So I challenge and I'm like, well, okay, so what if you got a woman that's been on drugs on the streets, whatever, all ripped up, maybe wearing a little bit of a t-shirt, comes for help, wants help, wants to like help me, help me get some, oh, they couldn't come in. And I was sitting here thinking about this and I'm like, like exactly what you said, all these rules and regulations when last I checked, I don't think God had any of those rules other than to love, understand, be there, be in compassion. And this is where I believe with this whole thing we're going through in the world right now, this is part of our mass awakening where people are going to be finding people like you and I say, I don't want all those rules and regulations. I know I'm going to fall down. I'm not going to be judged for it. I know I pick myself back up. and I just want to be in love and compassion and learn how to love more and connect with God through love not rules because the old way to me looks like so many rules like when i look at all the rules they throw at me you have to do this you have to do that. i'm like yes. quit telling me how to live my life yes. when god showed up in my life to change my life yes. so why is that wrong yes why is because like that was god that wasn't just i'm like i'm like okay my right. i restored so right those, do you see that, that those teachings are really yeah. starting? Like people are going, because I love what you said about the, the pastor or preacher that was, um, that it took his life. Because yes. really seeing all of these controls, I don't even know if half of them know how to get out. You said it well, like through yes, all religions. Through. Like you got to go through to just leave and say, I'm, I'm a whole being. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, what's interesting about even Christianity. <laughs> we would not even know Protestantism. And that word is so antiquated. Is there a Protestant today of someone protesting the Roman Catholic Church? Very few. But we wouldn't know non-Roman Catholicism had it not been for one man to have the 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 moxie, the the chutzpah, the the grit to hammer the ninety-five thesis on that Gutenberg Church in and or what? Yeah, what? Wittenberg Church, uh, Martin Luther, to put his 95 thesis in it. And then when he stands apart and says, this is not what the word, you're not preaching the word of God. This is what the word of God says. And he hammers the 95 thesis on the door. What always happens is there are these courageous souls that will stand apart. So Martin Luther stands apart, but then people idolize Martin Luther and create a denomination and dogma around Martin Luther, which becomes Lutheranism, the Lutheran mm-hmm. church. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, entropy sets in and entropy is that order turns to disorder. And sadly, people think that um, continuity is order, but it's actually disorder because life is 
vibrant. Life is fire. Life is constantly creating and em- and emanating changing, and consuming constantly. and changing. That's life. That yeah. is living. But this stagnant, this is the way it is. Well, that is not life. So then Lutheranism takes place. And then you have, you know, going back even further, you have King Henry the Eighth wanting oh, yeah. to divorce his wife. So he creates the Anglican church, the church of England, but then I don't to, like your religion. I'm going to create a new one. And a new one. And a new one. But then the Anglican church, same thing took place is this static dogmatic rule following. So then you have, you have, um, let's, for instance, John Wesley and George Whitfield were both Anglican preachers in, during the mid 1700s. And they ripped through London and they were preaching abolitionists. They're preaching to love people, to not see people as color or as Mm -hmm. creed. In fact, Wesley came from very um, wealthy class in England and Whitfield came from a very poor class and Whitfield went to the very wealthy and Wesley went to the very poor and they kind of changed paths. And then the Methodist church was created after John Wesley, the Methodist practice of praying praying they constantly were in prayer constantly in prayer what happens methodism just like any other religion or denomination becomes stale so what you were saying is the methodist church then would not allow um the homeless the dirty to be in their churches so this one man william booth who was a Methodist preacher who saw these people. He has, he has a famous quote. He said, they were dying in the shadows of our mm. steeples wow. and no one cared. So he was bringing these homeless in and they said, you cannot sit in the pulpits here. You have to go down. They had a subsection where they would let the lower class sit. And he said, this is not appropriate. So he started the Salvation Army, which wasn't its own denomination. Yeah. And then the Salvation Army started. And my point is, There's always these courageous individuals who will stand out and say no, but then people want to, instead of stand out themselves, want to cling on to another standing out and they formalize that standing out versus seeing, oh, you're a model for me. What, what path, what Tracy Clark world are you going to create? What Lucas Mack world am I creating? It's not, hey, I want to follow Tracy and be Tracy's dogma. I don't want to be my dogma. Oh, I, I totally agree. I say that all the time. I'm like, I'm here to kind of help show you, but go be your yes. unique self. Be yes. you. Yes. Otherwise, we'd be looking at clones. and like, There's nothing worse than you see someone showing up in the same clothes as you. It's the same thing, right? It's like, yes. no, no. Yes. So go, go do your own, be your own light and yes. just take God. Yeah. And, and I love what you say about that because it, it, it's true and creating these spaces. Okay. Where people can come and just love each other and learn and grow. And, and I always say, take all the teachings, mold them, mold them your way. Like there's no right or wrong way. But I, when you're talking, I have, I have a question. So you, for people that carry a lot of shame and a lot of guilt when they want to leave these spaces rather than just say, okay, I'm not going back there. They still carry imprints, belief systems like you, you and I know very well about the teachings, the learning. So having to unlearn and, and yes, creates a, I would say a safe space because it it keeps that fear inside, right? Like they don't have to look at it. What did you do? So for somebody that's listening right now Mm. and says, I'm here this has been my whole life, but I'm, I'm, I'm miserable. I don't feel I'm getting support. Like I, the biggest thing that irks me still is I know in our community, we have a really big give back. We're constantly giving back. How can we help, you know, people in the community, wherever it is. Yeah. And I don't see a lot of these. I know they do in different ways, but I don't see a lot of these organizations giving back to their people that are feeding them. I have a problem with that because I think right. you give back to those people. They're going to have problems too. Yeah. So how, what do you say to somebody that says, well, that's kind of me. He said, we go through it. Mm. You went through it. Yeah. So how does somebody on that side, in your perspective of what you walk through, because there's a lot of shame when you leave, there's a lot of guilt. There's a lot of, like I said, there's that, well, now you're going to be with the devil. Like there is, I've heard yeah. so much of it. Yeah. What Satan transfigures into oh, the yeah, devil. Satan, Why? Exactly. That, that's, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Like to yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm going to expose them because, you know, now you're not of the truth. And I'm like, yeah. oh, my dear. So that's a big thing to go through. You did it. What do you what do you say to those people listening? Go, how do I leave this? This is all I know. But it, they're not happy. Here. here 
I have an answer and I just kind of want to brace it. Well, I want to brace everyone for it. Um, I came to the conclusion a long time ago that I didn't care where God sent me, whether he sent me to hell or he sent me to heaven or sent me wherever else. I love him. I love God and I am not trying to make a deal with him. I am not. You don't need to make a deal with him. I am not trying to make a deal with him. Yeah. I don't care if he sends me to help in my days. He is worthy of being loved and known yeah. and walked in and experienced and lived. And when that, when you, all of us, when we can come to that place, I'm not saying emulate me, but I'm saying that is freedom that no one can speak to me and say, well, if you don't, 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 you're not going to, I'm not going to what go to heaven. I don't actually want to be around you. If you, this is what heaven is. <laughs> I uh, love that. <laughs> it's, I want to be in love. I grew up abused. I grew up in the church. I went to church camp. I read, I mean, when I became a preacher, I, without exaggeration, I never missed a morning or night reading the Bible. I never missed a morning or night praying on my knees. I fasted from Sunday night to Tuesday morning without food five years in a row. I read the King James Bible cover to cover seven times in 14 years. And by the seventh time I was angry at God, like God, I'm still doing all these things, but I hadn't really looked at all the pain, all the abuse, all the shame. Why does shame, why does someone's words affect me so much? Why am I not even in my own power to say, thank you, goodbye, and I walk wherever I'm walking? How am I so tethered to others' opinions, voices, denominations, doctrines? How am I not sovereign? Yeah. And I had to really look at that. And that was the teachings that made you feel less than. Yes. Versus. So there wasn't really, you were more connected to the teachings than God. Yes. I wanted to be holy more than anything because I felt so dirty from the abuse that I had gone through. I felt so broken and, and vile. And I tried to wash myself clean. And I thought if I could just be the ethereal clothing to the Holy Spirit. If I had nothing yeah. left of me and it was just God, the Holy Spirit filling me. And I was just this like clothing that that was what I was supposed to do. And that is the complete antithesis yeah. of what he's called me to do. He's called me to be me. He's called you to be you and to wake up to the fact that even if you reached holiness, then what? It's still by works and God is not interested in our works. He's interested in our surrender and our receiving his love so that we can have capacity to love others. And until we can receive the love of God, we cannot give the love of God. And so many people are professors of truth, but they don't understand that it is not truth if it doesn't come from love. Uh, Amen. They they try to separate it and it's not separable. I chills again. You know, it's it's so true. That is the biggest the biggest message what you said right there. Like I am goosebump, but it's so true. It's like they all feel I'm telling you the truth. This is the truth. Listen, if it's gotta be this way. Meanwhile, the whole lives aren't even that way. There's anger, there's upset, there's oh, abuse. bitterness, oh, there's, there's abuse, so much there's grossness. Yeah. Yeah. It's and meanwhile they're like, oh it's, it's all <laughs> you know, here. there's it's 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 really in that space and when you come exactly you said just love more have more compassion you you break through and you break free yes. like you said from yes. all of that oppression and the shame and the guilt because you realize wait a minute yes. i always say that even through our pain and our suffering god always has the doors to show us out right. we just have to be willing to go through them the and courage. then we get yeah the blessings and the miracles like it's not like he's there saying, okay, you're a good little being, so you don't have to have any pain and you're a bad little being. You don't know. It's, we're just here to learn. We're here to grow. We're here to experience. And, and I think that's exactly truth with what you said that that's the biggest thing right now is I I saw it. Okay. I'm going to say, I saw it. We had a political thing happen yesterday. Our, and so I see energies. So thank you, God. <laughs> Apparently, that's not the gift. But if you were in a prophetic church, it would be a gift. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, God lets me see, feel, and hear that that's not right because I'm yeah. not in the church. I'm right. something else. So, you know, oh, but yeah. it, in those churches, you'd be prophetic and, you yeah. know, stuff like that. Yeah. But I could see 
as one of our prominent people had resigned, you could see all the smoke and mirrors, all the lies, all that you could see energetically. There was no truth as to the resignation. It's basically a fog. I, we all know what's going on behind the doors, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm looking at that and I'm like, okay. And I said to God this morning, I'm like, this is what's happening right now is these truths are going to start being exposed in a level like never before. And, and I, I did hear your president talked the other day about the deep state and i was like well this morning (laughs) it came on after this thing and i'm like oh here he is talking about the deep state okay but it was really interesting i believe we're in this time of great truth great truth hence why people really need the courage and there's people like you and i many coming around the world saying be the light go through yes but that brings up another i just saw when you were talking can you please you explain this when you and I were talking on your podcast? And I want our listeners to understand this is the biggest question, and you explained it so well. So I'd love you to say it again. Mm-hmm. In a lot of the teachings, people are told if you don't worship and go through the Christ, you're not going to go to God. Mm-hmm. And I don't believe that. I know you don't mm-hmm. believe that. Um, but I don't think, like, there's nothing wrong. I I love that energy. I do. I love the energy, but I'm not going to worship anything. I have my incredible connection with God, and I love that that's my best friend. I would say God's my best friend, and that's where I go. I say, why go to everything else? I love them all, but I can go to the CEO. Like, that's Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people feel, and I've heard this from a lot of listeners, if I don't go through him and worship this being this person which i think Mm -hmm. probably when i see the energies over there going you're not supposed to worship me but then i'm told i'm a demon and then that's not right yeah there's again another guilt what's your perception on that what's your thought process knowing what you've seen (laughs) on the church because to me that's idolizing and worshiping another human and i don't that's not what god's about I'm going to give you an answer with history again, because without context, Please. Con- content, <laughs> and you got it. <laughs> and, look, everyone, listen, my brothers and sisters, content <laughs> without context is a very dangerous thing. It is. Yeah. And we have only been given content and then told to accept the content without any context. Amen. So the authorized version was, was there was set, there was four groups of seven translators that King James, this Protestant King, in England, who was the first king of the United Kingdom that united Scotland and in England, this this young, sickly king, this Protestant king, wanted to give, was truly a Protestant, was truly anti-Roman Catholicism, was truly anti-Romanism and the imperialism of Rome, wanted to give the, the word of God to the modern man in their vernacular. So he commissioned the best in the entire British Empire, the best translators and linguists to work on this Bible in the English language. And it took them seven years. Publicly, everyone knew what was happening. And the four groups of seven translators never spoke to each other. They only at the end brought their findings and then they saw where they were aligned. It was the seventh Bible written in the English language. And what's interesting, if you look at Psalm 12, I just got to read this to you and I will give an please. answer to. No, no, I uh, like the context, please. It, it, yeah, and I totally agree with what you say there. It needs to happen. This is fascinating. It says the words of the, this is the King James Bible. Yeah. It was never called the King James Bible. It's called the authorized version, but the King, okay. they mocked him after he died, which usually people do when it doesn't align to the system. But it says in Psalms 12, verse 6, the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Now, if you look at any other Bible version, it doesn't say thou shalt preserve them. They took those words out in every Bible version. So I wanted to give context because I want to answer your question because yeah, no, it no, matters. Geez. Words matter. Okay. Yeah, they do. So you have 1611, the Bible comes out. Now, the movie V for Vendetta, which I, I love. I love Actually, that movie. I tell everyone to watch that movie. So if you're listening, guy, go watch it. V for Vendetta. I love it. But Guy Fox, it's 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 almost ironic because they flip the protagonist and the antagonist because Guy Fox was a Jesuit who tried to kill King James and Parliament because they were bringing the Bible out to the common man's hand. So Guy Fox actually tried to kill and stop the Bible, which was written in a 
11 year old fifth grade reading level at the time, just to give context to how far, if we think we're so lofty and intelligent, how far we've actually declined in our ability to communicate clearly and read and consume words in the English language. But they try to stop it. It didn't stop. So you have from 1611 all the way, there was not a Bible written in the English language until 1881, the revised version. So you have almost 300 years of one text being preached and translated all around the world. And what did that produce? The Great Awakening and the Second Great Awakening. People are preaching this one message. It abolished slavery. It gave women rights the vote. It, it, did, it elevated the world with this one text. Now people are like, is this guy a King James only guy? Just follow me in the historical context of this, okay? <laughs> In 1881, you have the revised version it was written in secret. And Charles Spurgeon at first, when he was reading it, liked it. And then at the end, he disavowed the text. Because from 1881 to today, we have more than 500 Bible versions in the English language. Wow, I didn't realize there were so many. So, I mean. Wow. It is, it's, it's unbelievable how many Bible versions there are. Now, why did I give this context? Yeah. Because in the King James Bible, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. In every version from the revised version to today, they say no man comes to the Father but, but through right. me. Yeah. Now, if someone says, well, that's not that big a deal. Well, let me throw another Huge. one. The, Jeho- the New World Translation, which is the Jehovah Witness Bible. It says in John 1, and I'll, if people want to go and have scriptural context, then let's talk about these things. In, the yeah. Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. That's all Bibles except the New World Translation says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was a God. Yeah. So Logos then becomes a sub-God. So that word A, just the word A, changes the entire context. So just as by and through are completely different contexts, they used to preach, you emulate Jesus as your brother, as the firstborn, as Adam, as he replaced Adam, and he is saying, I and my father are one, he that abideth in me, and I and him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me teaching you, you can do nothing. You go to the father, you and the father dwell and abide in him, you and him without dwelling in him, you can't do anything either. But they have created a cult of personality, which is Romanism. And Rome has always created statues to worship and altars. And it's just (laughs) the same thing. Only now you can't see the statue per se. It's this like invisible statue that you have to go to. But what I love about that explanation, people are really Sorry, a long one. <laughs> no, no, but I love it. And what I love about it so much is you're like, you just said what you and I were saying earlier, that we're here to help people rise up. Yes. The same thing. We're not saying be me, worship me, go, I, we don't want that. None of us want that. We want to say is, look, we want to help you connect with your connection to God, which is exactly what you were just saying. There's no, there's no shame or wherever you're going to go or whatever you think, because you're not worshiping this being. And you just, you put it through such great context for people to understand that you can have this beautiful connection to the Christ consciousness. Sure. Just like you can have a beautiful connection to other holy beings. Sure. Yes. But like we're saying, and this is, this is why it's so important. I think people really hear this message because as we're transitioning between now and 2025, Mm. Not only are we going to see suicides, we're going to see yes. people question all of their teachings on yes. their spiritual connections, their emotional connections, their psychic connections, their yes. awakening within to realize they have all this laundry on top of their soul that needs to be done and cleaned out yes. so they can thrive and be happy and be at peace and mm. get rid of things like poverty and lack and hunger and all of that. And the only way that happens is by us having more love, compassion, and understanding. That's right. Like the two That's things right. I said today, if you have fear, well, look, fear, bitterness, and anger, those three things, if those are ingredients that live in your life, and a lot, your, your ingredients are not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. And it'll be so hard to get rid of those belief systems 
But that's what I see a lot in these religious organizations are fear, yes. anger, yeah. bitterness. Yeah. Like when someone tells me, oh, you know, I got shamed today by my mother because I said she said I should be a good Christian woman. And I'm like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Oh, okay. I want to talk. I don't know. So, Messiah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Christ means Messiah. Okay. This is yeah. very important. People understand when they say I'm a Christian, I am a Christian, but I am not a Christian of Christianity, meaning <laughs> Christ means Messiah. Messiah is the Hebrew of Mashiach, which means deliverer. Yeah. When they prayed, when they were crying out, the Israelites in Egypt, bring us a deliverer, bring us a deliverer. They're saying, bring us someone that can liberate our souls to make us free to get out of this bondage and tyranny. And Jesus, his name yeah. is actually not even, his name's Jesus. Ye- Ye- Yeshua or Yehoshua, which means salvation. Joshua is another way to say it. His name means salvation. Well, what does salvation mean? Salvation means to be in, to be in the atmosphere, enveloped and enraptured in love. So when you smell food and you salivate, you have a physical reaction to the environment. It's the same when you're in love. That is being in love. You are saved in love. So Jesus Christ means love brings freedom. Or you could say Christ Jesus, meaning freedom brings you in more love. So when someone says, I am a Christian, what they really need to be understanding is I'm a soul liberator. And wherever I walk, I don't shame anyone. I don't guilt anyone. I ask questions like Jesus did. Woman, where are thine accusers? Hey, you come out. We have... (laughs) We have stopped emulating the greatest model for our beingness. And and one of the things that we believe when we're taught something as children, it takes us to a certain level of understanding. And if we were taught something different, we'd have a greater understanding of, of our existence. So, for instance, we're told we have five senses. And five is the number of life in the Bible. The first, Day five is when God created life in a living creature. We also hear this term sixth sense. Mm -hmm. Now, sixth sense has been growing, has been people can't ignore it. Like I have this, I have this intuition. I have this knowing something's happening. Our sixth sense getting activated. Well, here's the truth. Six is the number of man. Man was created on the sixth day. The sixth book of the Bible is the first book named after man, Joshua, which has six letters. The sixth book in the New Testament is Romans as the first Mm -hmm. Man in the book name itself, man is buried six feet deep. Six is the number of man. So we really have six senses, but the system said you only have five and we're waking up right now to like be free. Huge. And really understanding that it's okay to tap into that, you know, yes. that sixth sense. Every time I hear that I laugh, I remember that, uh, that old show with Bruce Willis. Yeah, the dead people, yeah. Sixth sense. Yeah. I see dead people, but it's true. You know, you gotta have some fun, yeah. but it's, it's, it's true though, but that's yes. all part of that. And we're all born with that. And yes. Yes. a lot of times throughout history, people also have to understand the reason those fears and control were put in place were to also minimize so you will not wake up that sixth yes, sense and, and that intuition to someone else who has their sixth sense but is using yeah. it to form control over yeah. yes. yes yes and this is that whole space and this is what you and i both love to teach us to use it follow it take action upon it and just sit and ask yourself too you know are you coming from a loving place like I, I hear this from people where they'll go, oh, I'm so gone in love, but then they're plotting their revenge on whoever they don't like next. And I'm right, like, right. that is not God in love. If you're right. plotting revenges and you're plotting anger and you're plotting witchcraft and literally going out and doing it, I'm like, that is not God. God is that pure love of understanding, love someone, let them go, yes. allow them to be free, don't yes. in, you know, brace in these in brawls and these fights and battles, even when relationships end, it's like they're just ended. Just love them and let them go and just make peace because that's the ultimate that I really believe we're learning right now in this world of so much misinformation, yes. so much control and fear being put. Because I really truly believe that the fear is being put in there because the, there's a, a an energy that whether you want to call it dark or whatever, but there is an energy there that is just saying, I'm afraid all these people are waking up and going to yes. get their success going. 
Yes. Yeah. To my Christian friends, I understand it says there will be a falling away in the last days, but and knowledge shall increase in the last days. It also says in Malachi that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And it also says that it will deceive yeah. even the very elect. Now, I understand that the Christian world, because I, I so much, I understand that they think leaving is the deception. Yeah. But I want to present this idea that staying is the deception. That in Revelation, it says to come out of the great whore of Babylon, which is Roman system that Daniel's prophecy of the statue, the last kingdom on earth is Rome. And the feet are, we are still in the system of Rome and Rome is crumbling. Rome has fallen. And all the denominations are, if you go anywhere around the world, Christianity has the same form, a preacher at a pulpit in pew sheep, consuming narrative and then yeah. abiding by who that per- that's the same structure that has been before jesus that is romanism the priestcraft spoke and the pew dwellers listened and if they didn't listen they were kicked out of society they were kicked this system is over yeah, it is it's done, done. It's leave done. it stand in your own know the most high god for yourself receive yeah. the love of god that you can liberate other souls right now people are dying the people are waiting for us to wake up and hand them our hand and smile and look at and say you matter i love you i will hold you i will walk with you i will cry with you i will stand with you i'm not going to shame you i'm not going to say what do you believe if you don't believe we can't stand together we can't embrace together we can't cry together Thank you, God. Oh, it's the leaving the system. And David yeah. said, oh, how beautiful it is for brothers to dwell in unity. And the world and the Christian world says, unity is satanic. And I say, no, the <laughs> narrative know. of anti-unity is yeah. satanic. And I what agree. does Satan mean? Satan means accuser. Yeah. So he is the great accuser. So anything that accuses another is expressing, hello, Satan, when Satan goes before the most high God and accuses the brethren. And when you accuse, you are standing with him, not the most high God and says, let's see, let's watch. It's all good. Oh, you see my servant, Job. Okay. You want to throw it out? I got it. I know Job. Job knows me. It's all good. I always say when people start doing that and, you know, you've had it done to you, I had it done. I just, I, it's like sitting there in your lawn chair, having your coffee, just watching the show. Like, don't engage, you know, right. I, I don't engage. It's like, okay, I'll watch the show because the God of my understanding of pure love will come in and set that right eventually. And that is why we, we still, this is the thing. And, and I think with the virus, it's, it's really been hard on people because we don't have our place of community. I think if anything, the, the space of community where people could come together of like mindedness and, mm. you know, in that love that yes. I believe will really start to grow, which people are still seeking that kind of community yes. where they can be them and they have their own ideas and we can interact together. And I know this Sunday, I, I do a soul Sunday once a month. So I call it soul Sundays and we just, we come together and we just talk about things, but I, you know, the comments come through and we address what's happening. We have fun, mm. right. Shifting together and, that to me, what I, I love is that people are coming with more trust and, you know, mm. expressing the vulnerability of, I don't think I can trust in the God of my understanding because I don't know what that looks like. And we can have those discussions in that space. Mm. And I really see more people going there because this next year, if people don't have that love and that direct connection to God themselves and trust in it and lean into it and go, I'm not a bad person because maybe I'm going through this blip. Look at it like, well, maybe God just actually ripped me away from something old. So now I can actually embrace a better life, a better place. And you've experienced that going through your traumas. I experienced that. People say to me, Tracy, you have more patience than anyone I know. Why? And I'm like, because I learned over time that all of those things that happened became such great blessings that opened new doors and new doors. And like you just said, our job is not to kick people to the curb. Our mission to serve is to say, my door is open and you might fall down a million times. You fell down. 
I thought that we're going to keep <laughs> yeah. falling down, guys. Oh, and we're yeah. going to all yep. keep falling down. And that's one thing that I don't know if you find this. And I want to address this because I get this. People sometimes, you know, in our social media worlds, I call them the fake worlds. I, I really ha- I struggle with them because people always put out their best whatever self. And if you put down, you've had a rough day or whatever. They're like, oh, my God. You know, you, you talk this space. We're human beings. And that's <laughs> one thing I don't like about people when they're like, they, if they get to that place where they want to emulate exactly or be like you or whatever, I'm like, no, be oh, yourself yeah. because we are going to fall down. And I, I believe in the social media world, there hasn't really, they haven't created a space where, we, where you, you're humans. You, if you think that for the rest of your life, you're never going to have a challenge, you're blowing smoke up your butt because... <laughs> You're, you're going to, and people say, and I get that. They're like, well, you know, your life is so amazing. My life is amazing because it was hell. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But does it mean I don't ever have a rough day? No. Right. Does it mean that God couldn't like move something out? Sure. I'm human. I get hurt. I get hurt when you must get it. You read some of these emails. You're like, oh, oh my man. God. Like yeah. my assistant now, she literally just throws them in the garbage. I don't see them anymore, Yeah. but they'll go on social media or whatever. And it's like, really? And so we are humans and we all, we do have to understand that and come from peace and compassion. Yeah. What I've learned is where love is present, truth will come forth resulting in our personal freedom. And the reason we're not free is because we don't know love and the church system, the even out of the church too, but specifically the church system is how you doing? Oh, good. God bless you. Oh, I'll pray for you. This whole veneer. Oh yeah. And no one's addressing. Well, you know, if, as for a lot of kids, I saw my, my mom get punched last night and she put on extra makeup this morning at church or my, they're screaming yeah. or fighting or molested or beat or, yeah. Oh God. But they, if you say the right That's words, you're in the club yeah. and you know how to play the game. And that is, when Jesus says many are called, few are chosen, there'll be many that come in that day and say, Lord, Lord. And you got to understand the context of that. They who say, Lord, know who Jesus is. Yeah. And they say, Lord, Lord. And he says, depart from me. I never knew you. But Lord, but what are you shocked? What? But Lord, didn't we cast out devils, prophesy in their name, heal the sick? Rhetorical question. Jesus doesn't even answer. He says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity and the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, Iniquity means impurity. So you talked about ingredients earlier. Like mm-hmm. if you have a pure glass of water and I put just a little bit of, of blue, uh, one drop of blue food coloring, yeah. it would change that entire glass. Iniquity is when you claim that blue glass is actually pure water. That is what God cannot tolerate is to claim you're loving, but you judge that's not love. And you have, changed my system for yeah. your system and you have deceived many. So Jesus says, many will come in the day and say, Lord, Lord, depart from me. I never knew you. So the big thing is he's saying, I yeah. never knew you. I never was in you. You knew me and we're, at, we're the whole church system is how much do you know God, follow God, love God, blah, blah, blah. But he's saying, I never knew you, you yeah. never cracked wide open. You never stood naked, vulnerable and said, here am I, God, do what you want. Have me what you want. Lead me where you want. Take me where you want. I've done that I'm so yours. many times. And I will tell you, I love you just said that because I've done that many times. And I thought, God, if anyone saw me doing this in my room or whatever, they probably <laughs> think I'm crazy. But trust me, guys, yes. like what you just said there, it's like my prayer every day. I get up, I'm like, yes. thank you, God, use me how you need to use me today. And yeah. I'll just, you know, walk in that. And at the end of the day, I'm like, thank you, God. I, did, I checked. Did I serve the way I was asked? Because a lot of times we're told it and we don't listen. We're all human, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Did I serve in the best way I possibly could today? And I checked my day. And did I did I serve? And thank you, God. Did I love to the best that I knew I could? Sometimes I'm like, no, nah, it's a little grumpy today. So no, I didn't. You know, I, I do my own little <laughs> thing. But for the right. most part, I check in. And I, I love that. I can't believe we're up top of the hour here. Okay. I told you we have to do this again. Okay. <laughs> so I love what you said there. So before we, I know we have to wrap up and it's like, boom, it seems like five minutes, but if you, what do you want to leave for the listeners during this transition and time? Mm. Also tell them where they can find you. I know we're going to have it. I'm good, guys, you'll see it on my YouTube. You'll see it on the transformation doc radio, but um, maybe mm. just where first, where they can find you. Okay. Yes. And then what you want to leave for people today. Okay. Um, you can find me at lucasmack.com. 
Um, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook, YouTube. Um, yeah. Thank you. And, and I'd be honored to connect with people and I'm sure <laughs> Leads so us this is not our love. We, we have many things. Are still <laughs> we got more. What I want to leave people with is, is this. Forget the belief structures for a second. And I want you to look inside you of what pain you have yet to face. The time you were beat, the time you were hit, the time you were not held when you want. Whatever caused pain and hurt and rejection and shame and made you feel dirty, whatever it was. Maybe you grew up in an amazing home, but you were told to get A's and you got a B and that wasn't good enough. And you just felt this lack and you needed to prove your worth. Take time to go into that pain, to look at that pain and to speak for that child that you once were as you are now and to tell that child that you love them and that you they are worthy and they are beautiful and, and to speak to the abuser in that moment in your memory, go and face and be your own hero and then go into a safe place if it's a field, if it's a bedroom and into a pillow and scream out all the trauma that you have been stuffing in for your entire life. I wrote a song when I was 17 years old. I said, a baby cries its mother's tears that she's been hiding all her years. It takes the next generation to emote this trauma that people have been holding on to. And it's our time right now to get the trauma out of us so that we can release once and for all. And no, we have done the work that we may be free. And when we're free, we give other people permission to be free. I, I love that. And it's true because not only do we become free, I always say screw in the pillow or like get those little soft baseball bats going yes. to bed. Yeah, the pool noodles. Yeah, but, do, yeah, but don't be I, – I think it's a space now where there's that shame of of just letting that go because when it is, what, you, what happens in our, our bodies, our soul, our spirit, our, our aura, our energetic field, we create more space. Space, hmm. which allows more love yes. to come through yes. and eventually you start to look at all those traumas and they have no life force to them anymore they hmm. have no connection that's no right. memory that's right. and that's how you know you've really been free it was yes. one of the things i like people to know once you can look back and you do that release and yes. yeah all the power is within and yes. once people are ready to really activate more and never give that power away Oh, miracles, miracles, miracles. See them every day. I am so thrilled that you came today. Thank I you. can't thank you enough. I know we're, you guys are listening, if you're in our community, you will see Lucas a few more times if you can get him to agree. <laughs> I have some ideas spinning. I haven't even told him yet, so it's happening. But I want to thank everyone for listening today. Make sure you check out the Golden Rule Revolution podcast as well and learn more. And understand that as we're on this journey, guys, this is a time to find your connection to the God of your understanding like never before. This is your time to come into love. If you want to make it through the next 24 months, get right with the God of your understanding. Get out of the fear and don't believe everything you're seeing out there. So mm. thank you again, Lucas. Thank you for everyone. And we will see you next week right here, same time, same place on the Tracy L. Clark Show. Have an incredible week and thank you, Lucas. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Tracy L. Clark Show with me, Tracy L., where I teach you how to connect to the God consciousness so you can unlock your superpowers and connect at light speed and live your extraordinary life. Tune in every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where together we will unlock the secrets of your body and your life. As the founder of the Body Regeneration Academy, I, Tracy L., will provide you with the insight and simple tools you can apply right now in your life to move you forward and leave the past in the dust. To join the Body Regeneration TLC Online Academy, make sure you check me out at tracylclark.com. Views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its management, or advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio.